is now 100 years old. That is not, after all, such a very long time. That century has seen five major wars and a thousand lesser skirmishes. It began with a crude telephone, and now we can talk to men on their way to the stars. And today, a microchip the size of your little fingernail can contain all the technical information that would have been needed to equip those million men for the war in the Crimea. But long before the Crimea, long before that century began, long before the motor car, there was the name of Persia. is a craftsman's name. It originally meant he who collects, prepares, and sells pitch, used for, among other things, the corking of wooden sailing hulls. Between the Vosges and Jura Mountains, between Alsace, Switzerland, and Burgundy. Almost on the border of Germany is the region of Montbéliard, the home of the Peugeot family as far back as the 13th century. century, four Peugeot brothers are running variously a spinning mill, a dye works, and a tannery. Two die from typhus, but by 1810, brothers Jean-Pierre and Jean-Frédéric have built a steel foundry. We thunder down the century. Peugeot makes steel frames for ladies' corsets, saws, tools, hardware, cages for the crinolines made famous by the Empress Eugenie, coffee mills, pitchforks, watch springs. The family company always treated its workers as part of the family. In 1853, they organized what we today would call a credit union. In 1870, they built a hospital just for their staff. A year later, reduced the working day to 12 hours. And from 1876, started a superannuation scheme when such a thing was unheard of. They also built company housing to give their people the benefit of low rents. And in 1888 came the first Peugeot bicycle. However, a year after that, there was a historic meeting at Valentigny, then the center of the Peugeot business. A Swabian German called Gottlieb Daimler sat down with Armand Peugeot and one Emile Lavassor, who was in partnership with another Frenchman, René Panard. History makes such strange bedfellows. Daimler was an engine man, having already built an airship, a motorcycle, and a motorboat by 1890, whilst Panna and Lavassor's business was involved in making woodworking machinery. But Peugeot's value was his experience in fabricating steel tubing for bicycles. So it came to pass that an agreement was signed to build a Peugeot quadricycle powered by a Daimler petrol engine built by Panna et Levasseur. Shortly after, there emerged a four-seater vis-a-vis where passengers and drivers faced each other, which in 1891 was reliable enough to follow the Paris-Brest-Paris -Paris bicycle race. 
1,200 kilometers in 139 hours road time, with no breakdowns. This was amazing. It was the longest trip made by a motor vehicle at that time. It was the beginning of the Peugeot car, and fittingly established immediately the nature of the beast. It was not long before the lion became the trademark of the company, now to be called the Sons of the Brothers Peugeot. The nature of the lion is strength, courage, pride, endurance, integrity, loyalty, leadership. Easy words to apply today to the products of the company of the sons of the sons of the brothers Peugeot. That Type 3 vis-a-vis -vis now sits proudly in the old brewery of Sochaux, one of 98 vehicles in the Peugeot Museum. The collection reminds us that at the turn of the century, there were only 688 cars on the roads of America against more than 6,500 in France. The world's first motorsport event, a 125 kilometer reliability trial from Paris to Rouen in 1894, was won by a Peugeot from 20 others. a Peugeot averaged nearly 22 kilometers per hour to win the first true motor race ever run, the Paris-Bordeaux-Paris event. By 1913, a Peugeot set a new record at Brooklands by averaging 170 kilometers per hour for one hour. There were two remarkable things about that car. Its three-liter four-cylinder engine had four valves per cylinder and twin overhead camshafts in 1914. Peugeot won the 1912 and 1913 French Grand Prix. In the sands of time are many Peugeot footprints. were being sold before Daimler, before Benz, before the Lanchester in 1895, the first petrol engine four-wheeler built in Britain, before Henry Ford built his first car in 1896, and General Motors was founded. Renault and Opel were not born until 1898, Fiat until 1899. And the tombstones in the great automotive burial grounds include many names born during the first 10 years of Peugeot and now long gone. Panna, De Dion, Wolseley, Lanchester, Riley, De La Haye, Packard, Isotta Francini, many others, including the magnificently named and briefly flowering British car, the All Days and Onions. All gone now. Revered ghostly names echoing down the haunted corridors of many memories mechanical. These days, Peugeot still uses motorsport as the white-hot crucible. From the 504 model onwards, Peugeot has won many international rallies, including the East Africa Safari.
1905 made an instant impact on world rallying, particularly in the Paris-Dakar. It was a WM Peugeot that was, last July, the first car to top 400 kilometers per hour along the awesome Mulsanne Strait at Le Mans. And by 1990, Peugeot will meet head-on, in the new Group C sports car formula, the new technology factory monsters from Jaguar, Porsche and Mercedes-Benz. Consider a Peugeot. A Peugeot is unique. It is evolutionary and revolutionary. It is no instant coffee car. It is the result of a century of careful, deliberate and intelligent advancement of the principles that motivated the four Peugeot brothers of Montbéliard. Every Peugeot is still based on the credo of fundamental function of simple but imaginative solutions. is in that tradition a single-mindedness of ensuring that the thing must work properly, must be strong, must be attractive, must be rewarding, must emphasize the special nature of its owner. It is this continual reminder of intelligent simplicity, blended with a sincere belief in excellence, that makes a Peugeot and a Peugeot owner unique, even today. It is best summed up by the famous words of French philosopher Alphonse Carr, who died the year before the first Peugeot was built. It runs thus, plus ça change. C'est la même chose. It means, quite simply, the more things change, the more they remain the same. And that is the main reason why, today, in a time of flimsily held loyalties, of transient traditions, you will find many driving their fifth or sixth product, bearing the name of the company the sons of the sons of the sons of the brothers Peugeot.